when we talk about people on a spiritual path, you have to be specific. There are individual men and women on a spiritual path. And for each one of those individuals, the path may be radically different from the person next to them. We, it's not one size fits all in Krishna consciousness. I remember someone coming to Srila Prabhupada with the idea for a book, 108 Steps to Self-Realization. <laughs> Prabhupada said, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> he said, it's not mechanical like that. We're personalists. You know, each of us has a particular path in our Krishna conscious life, and it's very, very unique to us. Yeah, and we really have to be careful about judging other people by what we think is the right way to execute devotional service. That's a very dangerous thing. It's gotten us into a lot of trouble in, in our society in years gone by that, you know, we think we know, we know <laughs> how it should be done. And yet for someone else, it may be radically different, radically, radically different. Mm -hmm. And um, I think our job is to really dig very deep inside ourselves and be willing to accept that this person's behavior is not up to standard. They're not, they're not up to standard. But if they're sincere, if they are sincere, they have to be accepted as saintly. You can't reject someone because they're not doing uh, regulative principles up to some uh, uh, you know, general standard of things. For all you know, one year from now, this person's concerns, troubles, obstacles will be resolved, and they're going to zoom ahead a million miles past where you are today. Mm. And you, who may be doing very well with your 16 rounds and uh, uh, regulative principles, psychically there is something you have not addressed yet. And, and it's creating this obstacle in your life. And you're not getting past it because perhaps you're afraid to confront it. You know, the things that stop us in our spiritual life are not are very often not that we're neglecting to go to Tulsi Puja. You know, that's that's not usually what's holding us back from advancing spiritually. Yeah, I think this is so true. I've seen this through that if something gives me strength. And that's wonderful. I, I, if I know that and I can use that to strengthen myself in my spiritual life. But then what happens is, if I find that someone else is having problems in their spiritual life, I presume that they are that the problem is because they are not doing the things as I am doing them. And that's what is causing them weakness. But it could be very different. So what you said is, somebody not going for Tulsi Puja, somebody not going yeah. for money program. That's almost given like a standard solution to all problems. Can I, I, can I admit? confess something to you. I've never told this story ever. Oh dear. I've never told this story before. Because it's so embarrassing. I was a young devotee in Paris. Maybe less than a year. Certainly less than a year. And uh, but I was very, you know, proud of being a devotee. And I was the first one up in the morning. I led the kirtans. You know, I would lead the sankirtan party. I was giving the classes. You know, it was like Yogeshwara. And um, I had a, a friend, someone who was a friend who wasn't living in the temple. He had a job outside in Paris. And um, he was performing devotional service, but he wasn't up to the regulative principles you know he was married and uh, he had a different way of doing things so i remember once i was staying at his apartment i don't remember whether there was no room at the in those days the temple was just his little house so i'm not sure why i was living with him but i i, I went into the kitchen and i saw under the sink there was a bottle of wine an, an open bottle of wine and oh, I got so, oh, this is wrong. You know? 
and I poured that bottle of wine out in the sink. About a day or two later, this person asked me if I could find some other place to live. And there was an expression and he was in his face. He was so hurt. He was so uh, humiliated, ashamed, disappointed, disappointed in me, disappointed in himself. I can't tell you for certain. But I've never forgotten that. This, this attitude that I had, this holier-than-thou attitude, that I was discouraging someone who was trying to be a devotee by judging him and by taking action, like, you know, uh, interrupting in the life that he was living with. I never told, I've never told that story to anybody, but it comes to mind now because I realized I was so young and so headstrong and so I, I really lacked compassion. You know, I thought I was doing something to help this person in their Krishna consciousness, not at all. I was just being arrogant. And, um, so I, I, I think we need to, you know, do, do better, <laughs> let's put it that way. You know, we're, we're called upon to do better and, and to be very, very, very careful to never discourage someone else just because they may not be doing it the way we think is right or they're not up to the standard or whatever. You know, our job is to encourage everyone 